Yes, hi, my name is uh, Dan Mervish, uh, D-A-N-M-I-R-V-I-S-H, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Slam Dance Film Festival. Uh, I forget, there's, I think the next door neighbor's yard guys come on Mondays. The first festival that we put on was uh, January 1995. Here's the poster, Slam Dance 95, Anarchy in Utah. 95 was an interesting year and just kind of in general in the history of independent film. Institutions of, of independent film kind of took this next leap towards Hollywood or got bigger or got stronger or whatever. And Sundance was a part of that. You would get distribution, you would get an agent, you would get a career, you would make your next film, you were on Easy Street. Now, there were plenty of films that showed at Sundance where that didn't actually happen, but that was still, that was sort of the, the, the dream that everyone had. That year at the IFFM, there were 95 completed feature films. And we thought, well, some of us will get into Sundance. So we sort of left New York to each other and we said, hey guys, well, maybe one of us will be in Sundance, or a couple of us, you know, we'll see you out in Park City. And otherwise, good luck to you. And then lo and behold, none of us got in. Out of the 95 completed feature narrative films at the IFFM that year, not a single one got into Sundance. And then this kind of plan B approach of doing a renegade screening in Park City. And that was really the birth of Slam Dance. And when we had this idea, we pitched it and they were like, oh, it sounds great, but what if I get blacklisted by Sundance? You know, Am I really gonna piss people off? We're like, well, yeah. We all stayed in a condo in um, in Salt Lake. When I say all, that means all like 24 teams of filmmakers. And we hadn't even thought about how to get a venue in Park City. This is as close as we could even figure it out, because honestly, none of us had ever been there. So we found a guy in Salt Lake who rented us a 60 millimeter projector and a screen. And we shoved this stuff in the back of this little hatchback. And I remember at 11 o'clock at night, we're driving up to Park City and I'm squished in the back with like this screen sticking out the window and the windows rolled down because that's the only way it would fit in the car and getting snowed on. And we drive up to Park City and we start just looking for a venue and we find the Prospector Hotel. And the Prospector was the home of one of the biggest venues for Sundance. They turned one of their convention rooms or something into a theater every year. And, um, and that was Sunday, one of Sundance's main venues. But when you get there at midnight, there's like a night clerk who's like some local kid who doesn't know any better. And he's like, yeah, I'll rent you one of our other little conference rooms. And it was a room not much bigger than this, you know, it's like 20 by 20 foot. Um, but it was literally 30 feet down the hall from Sundance's main venue. So we set up a 60 millimeter projector in there. We immediately got on the payphone <laughs> to call everyone else back in Salt Lake. And we said, guys, we got a space in Park City. Everyone, hightail your asses up the hill and we're gonna make flyers and posters and whatever. So we did that. We And I think the hotel let us use their copy machine and we made flyers like, you know, Slam Dance is now in Park City proper. We scheduled our screenings for, I think, 15 minutes after the Sundance screenings down the hall so that anyone in their overflow crowd would just show up, you know, come to our place. But we stood in front of their lines and we passed out flyers. And it, it went, um, you know, it went remarkably well. I mean, by this point, we, you know, we had, you know, screenings in three different venues in two cities with 24 films, which was quite a lot to pull off. Because people were asking us, oh, is this just a one-time thing or, can do this all every year and it, it hadn't really occurred to us until sort of towards the end of it that we might you know keep doing it and Peter was very much instrumental in, in sort of realizing that there would be some longevity to the festival I didn't realize it would be 18 years but <laughs> that first year was great because it what it did is it it put a nice little stamp you know a, a red letter s on all of our shoulders um, in a good way, that then a lot of other festivals weren't just looking at what was at Sundance, they were looking at what was at Slamdance. That was really, you know, putting down the marker that said, no, we're going to stick around, you know, for the long haul.